In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the home button on the iPhone 8 Plus. This can be a little bit of a tricky repair just because you will lose the Touch ID function. If you can turn the phone off, power it down. In this case, I can't seem to be able to. Then remove the two pentalobe screws either side of the charging connector. I know that this phone's already been opened. However, it is pretty easy to open the screen on these ones. Just take a single-sided razor blade and insert it between the edge of the chassis and the edge of the plastic bezel at the edge of the screen. And you're going to insert it to push, push it down flat. And then you're just going to sort of pop it up like that. That's going to pop the screen off. And then you can insert a pick like that. There will probably be adhesive on your one. However, my colleague already tried to do this repair the other day um, and seemed to forget how to do it. And that's why we're making this video. So the adhesive's already been removed from this one is what I'm getting at. And it's probably a little bit easy to open. But we're going to basically run the guitar pick a couple of millimetres into the device all the way around it. Once we've got the screen separated around all three edges, notice how I said three edges and not the top edge as well, we're going to put a weighted object behind the phone and then we're going to lift up the bottom, wiggle it from side to side and then flick it open like opening the back cover of a your favourite novel. So in terms of propping the screen up, just use a mug or a weighted object. I've got this nice board holder, but a mug does the job just as well. Next, we need to remove the screen. To do that, first of all, you've got four crosshead screws that hold down this sort of, I always call it an L-shaped shield. It's not really L-shaped. It's like a Tetris piece, but you know what I mean. We need to get it out of the way, like that. Next, disconnect the battery. That's this one just here. Isolates power from the device, meaning that we can disconnect the screen and this other cable underneath, that's for the touch. Sorry, the backlight and the home button. So that cable there is the guy we need, we're looking at on this repair. There's two tri-wing screws at the very top here. Keep them safe for reinstallation later, and then carefully lift up the shield with some tweezers and disconnect the cable with a plastic spudger. Because everything's disconnected, we can remove the screen and we can put the chassis and the motherboard to one side. We're not going to need that. The part that we're looking at is this home button here. We're going to remove that in a minute. But first, I'm going to remove this little metal aluminium sort of shield off the back of the screen. That's held in with five or six tri-wing screws. So just work your way around these edges first of all removing all the screws that you can. They're a different size to everything else. That's the problem with working with iPhones is all the screws are different sizes. So just beware and keep all your screws organized. So now we've got all those five screws removed. We're gonna move down to the bottom of the screen as well, where we've got a crosshead screw just here. And another four tri-wing screws just here. Get those guys out of the way. And like I say, keep everything organized. Use a magnetic mat somewhere where it's, where it's not gonna get knocked over. And yeah, just go ahead and remove, remove, remove. Disconnect the home button using a plastic spudger. Get that out of the way. And then we've got two more crosshead screws. Let me show you which ones we need to remove. It's just these two here, the one on the far right and the one on the bottom left. Remove both of those. And that's gonna allow this plastic shield now, I want to get underneath it. So I'm gonna be very careful with my plastic spudger. Get underneath here, and I'm just sort of, see how I twist it to the side so that it's sort of, because it's stuck a little bit to this cable here. So I'm just gonna be very careful and disconnect it. What we don't wanna do is be tearing these cables or causing any unnecessary damage to them whilst we're removing stuff. It's got this weird adhesive crap on it and then it sort of overlaps. It's just a bit awkward is the best way to describe it. So with that lifted like that, we can now slide it from underneath this part here and then that's removed. Now, 
This is the dangerous bit. First of all, we can poke the home button down there and you can, you can just rip this one out now because that one's obsolete. We're gonna replace that home button. This one's broken, remember. Now for the scalpel and the cable that we're gonna cut is this one just here. You cut it on the plastic. If you cut it through the glass at the back, you can see the gray bit, which is the glass and the white bit, which is the plastic. You just wanna cut it on the plastic. Get it out of the way like that. Now, now we need to get this cable just underneath this thin one like that. And I'm gonna thread it back through just here. And can you guess what we're gonna do with this? We're gonna slice it. Just be careful because we don't wanna cut this guy. This is the LCD cable. This is the important one. The other one is the home button cable. Next, we need our magic flex cable. This is a JCID universal home button cable. It works for the iPhone 7 Plus and the iPhone 8 Plus. And basically what we're gonna do with this is it's got a little bit of adhesive on the back and we're gonna run that on the underside of the LCD cable. Just be careful because it needs to thread through, through like that. You see how I've threaded it through that little hole there? It needs to thread through there and then stick down onto the back of the backlight in the right place. So you see how it's stuck like that? That's where that's gonna sit now. And then we're gonna reattach that metal, steel, aluminium thing. And to do that, we're gonna thread that one through there, thread the other cable through there, and we're gonna make sure that it all sits nicely. No cables are getting snagged and run it underneath these parts. And it just wants to be putting everything back how we how we found it really. I think I made it awkward for myself not unscrewing the three screws. I'll just loosen that one off so this slots under there like that. Now I'm going to tighten that one and install those other two crosshead screws on the right and on the left. Now when you're replacing the button. It needs to be an original pulled button. I'm gonna put some links in the description of where you can buy all the parts that I use in this video, but this is an original pulled button from another iPhone 8 or iPhone 8 Plus. They both work the same. You can't use an iPhone 7 Plus on this one. It doesn't work that way, but you can use an iPhone 8 or an iPhone 8 Plus button. So we're gonna thread it underneath and into the hole then we're going to lift that cable up over the top and i always like the way that this works because that that sits on top and then that sits on top of that i don't know why i find it satisfying but i just like it all right don't call me weird i just like the way it goes together stick this little shield on there and then we'll get the four tri wing screws that hold those down There's one crosshead screw that holds us the bottom left of the shield in place. This little bit of stray cable here, don't worry about it. It's now disconnected and it's dead, so there's no live ends or anything like that to worry about. All we're going to do now is get those five little tri-wing screws and reinstall them on this shield. Make sure these are tight. I don't know why, but they have a tendency to come loose. So just make sure that they're nice and tight. You might also be thinking to yourself, yes, you've got a lot of confidence in this repair that you've just done. Now, if you are unsure and you don't believe that this is going to work, just dry fit it. When I say dry fit it, I mean, just plug in your home button to that cable and plug it in where it gets plugged into and you can test that it works. Now, what I find is that if I show you guys me dry fitting something, everybody stops watching it after that point so I need to keep you watching to the end where I've, I've shown you that it works. So unfortunately I don't show that bit. Make sure that the back of the screen is clear and there's no adhesive left over. This one has, like I said before, already been prepared by my wonderful skilled colleague. And he's also removed the majority of the adhesive on the edges here. If, the, if you need to remove the adhesive, just use a little scrapey tool like a number 17 X-Acto blade. Same again. You can find these on my website. I will link these in the description below and you can buy this part direct from us just there. Make sure it's nice and clean. Use a cleaning brush 
and a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Before finally getting yourself one of these adhesive seals and line it up in the top left corner. Oops, nearly made a right mess of that. Line it up in the top left corner, follow it down the left hand edge, and then the rest of it should line up with a little bit of persuasion in this case. Um, remove the top film all the way around, and then we can offer up our screen which is a nice simple job. Don't forget to use your weighted object at the back, just here. And then we're gonna offer up the screen, starting off with the new cable that we've just put in. Put that just there, make sure that it plugs in. Plug in the screen cable, so the LCD and touch cable, which is this one. And then before you do the battery, it's always best to plug the front camera in first. The easiest way to line this up, right, is to grab hold of it, just like that. I'm looking through the camera now with some tweezers and then you're going to sort of hover it into place like that with the tweezers and then just push it down until it clips into place and whilst we're up here we may as well reconnect these two triwing screws that hold that shield in place sometimes these particular screws are a little bit unmagnetic so just be aware that they can be a pain in the ass but these seem to go in okay move down to the bottom now Reconnect the battery. Easier said than done. Put the Tetris shield back on and re-secure the screws. I got interrupted halfway through doing these screws, but just remember that this bottom left screw, so this one just here, is actually on your bottom right as you're looking at this video, is the long one, and the rest of them are all smaller size ones. Don't try and put that screw that goes in that hole into that one, that one, or that one, because it will break the logic board. We've seen it happen, and I don't want it to happen to you. Now, at this point, it's up to you. You can turn it on and test it, or you can gamble. I'm gonna turn it on, but I'm not gonna test it. I'm gonna gamble, because I think it's gonna work. And, thanks to the power of editing, either way, whether it works or not, sorry, I'm just peeling off this adhesive. Whether it works or not, you're not gonna know it's gonna work. But look, we've got unable to activate Touch ID. Don't worry about that. I said that at the start of the video. There is no way that you can get Touch ID back on this. But what you can do is get home button back. Look at that. We're back, baby. Let's just tap that. So just make sure it works. That's it. Job done. Magic. Oh, no, you know what? I've lied to you, haven't I? I've not sealed it up first. I said I was going to seal it. I'm sorry. I've lied to you. Anyway, don't forget your bottom screws. Push your screen back on. Make sure that it's connected all the way around. I didn't explain that very well because I got a bit excited and not gambling. But yeah, home button fixed. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.